Hello, it's Amber, your superhero stylist. Today is July 16th, 2008, and I'm talking about IDW's lock and key. No big spoilers in this episode, so it's safe for you to hear, but there are images from issues 1 through 5, some of which I caution you contain graphic violence. There once was a huge house called Key House that was loved by a couple of young brothers. The Lock brothers found all sorts of secret enchantments within its antique walls. As the boys grew into men, the house's magic was never again discussed nor even believed. However, dear readers, that does not mean that the secrets are gone from Key House. The next generation of children are about to enter Key House. The brutal death of their father brings Tyler, Kinsey, Bode, and their mother to the monstrous Victorian where the surviving brother, Duncan, lives in Lovecraft, Massachusetts. In Lock and Key, the physical attacks are quite graphic. Though IDW Publishing doesn't issue target readership labels or warnings like Marvel does with its max mark, Lock and Key is definitely for mature audiences only. The story itself is intense and worthy of being better considered in the horror or suspense genre than in the torture porn violence for violence sake subcategory. Any questions that come to a reader in the early issues are explained in time. If you can stomach the bloodshed and brief male prostitution scenes, you'll get the satisfaction of unfolding elements by issue number five. Teenage murderer Sam Lesser starts his killing spree in issue number one and kills everyone he meets on his way to Key House. Throughout each issue, the pages jump back and forth from current time at Key House to the flashbacks that brought the family there when their serene lives in California were turned upside down. The youngest of the children, Bode, is most involved in the secrets of Key House. He is the one to find the charmed keys and have personal experiences in the spirit plane. The oldest, Tyler, can save the family in the real physical world. It's up to Bode to save the family from the spiritual elements that are out to hurt them. Lock and Key is written by Joe Hill with art by Gabriel Rodriguez. With only six issues in the miniseries, readers might feel compelled to wait for the trade hard or soft covers to come out. The thing is, everyone is already talking about this series, and it's hard to avoid the spoilers. It's like recording the final game of the World Series and waiting until you get home to find out who wins. The quality artwork by Rodriguez is so well detailed that you barely need your imagination when an axe goes through a human head. Joe Hill doesn't need to ride his famous father's coattails. He's the son of Stephen King, if you actually didn't know. It does make one wonder what bedtime stories must have been like in that house. Hill is talented in his own right, and Lock and Key is a great avenue to bring him a new fan base. He is already an accomplished writer, having authored a few books, such as Heart Shaped Box and 20th Century Ghosts, but his resume holds even more. The individual issues of Lock and Key are a pricey $3.99, but you don't have to question if it's worth it. Every penny is a solid investment in entertainment. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Amber, your superhero stylist. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel before you log out. Remember that being evil is never a good trend.